Brian Elber is here, Wrestling Observer Live. Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. we got so much to talk about here. I do want to mention that later on tonight, Brian and Vinny show. It is the last Brian and Vinny of February, and it is Black History Month. And so tonight, we'll be watching the following WrestleMania 37 matches. We have got Lashley versus Drew McIntyre, Apollo Crews versus Big E, and yes, the Nigerian drum fight. And Bianca, Belair, and Sasha, which would be the, I believe, first time two black women headlined a, a WWE pay-per-view night. So that's coming up here tonight. And we have not made a decision about next month. But uh, I think it's going to be that uh, a WWF, um, God, I always forget what it's called. I always think it's Collision. Superstar? Challenge. Challenge. Night, some mid-80s challenge. So no, we can get back into, these are the four you're going to watch. You'll know week after week after week, et cetera. Now, so. are you going back into the, the 80s or are you sticking in the 90s with these? What do you mean? I mean, where, where, where are you pulling these out of here, these the stars? What era? Or the challenges? Challenge. The 80s? Okay. 80, they've got 80s challenge ups, like 86, 87. Okay, so the I think we're going to go back to, uh, to that. Yeah. For us old men here. Hey, listen, I enjoyed, I enjoyed some of the, uh, those 90s superstars shows. I might have been the only one. Well, here's the thing with the 80s ones. You know, the matches aren't much because that's not what WWF did. You know, you get all those squash matches, but what really makes it are some of the interviews and some of the vignettes and things like that that we see today but were groundbreaking or, you know, certainly jarring for a lot of old wrestling fans back then, but there's a lot of very entertaining stuff in there, too. First says, get some Ron Simmons in there. We did, like, two weeks ago. Yeah. We had the, uh, the first, uh, what, 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 was it 90, 90? I forget the, the show it was, but. Tama Tonga is heading to WWE. There's a members-only story by Dave up on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. But the gist of it is, Tama Tonga is heading to WWE. <laughs> now, what are you going to do with this guy? I can tell you. I think it's very obvious that he ain't coming to not be a part of the bloodline. Wait feud. a second. He's not going to be a good brother? No, I don't think so. But, you know, I was thinking about this, and, you know, there's a million things they can do. But I think the the easiest one is that if you've been watching the show for a long time, it is very, very clear that Roman has been telling Solo Sokoa you are the next tribal chief. And Solo Sokoa, if you've looked at his booking, obviously at some point he's turning babyface to feud with Roman Reigns. Well, how does this happen? I don't know, but I could see a simple storyline where Tama Tonga comes in and all of a sudden he's Roman's guy. And he's the one getting everything that Solo used to get. You know, Roman drops the line that he could be the... And Solo... You know, he's the odd man out, and finally he does the big split, and there's your Solo Sokoa Roman Reigns feud. And then Tama Tonga is Roman's second in command or whatever. They're going to need something for Roman to do once he's no longer champion. And uh, a feud with the bloodline Solo Sokoa, I mean, you could do something there. Or he might end up a good brother, but I don't think that's what's going to end up happening. Well, I mean, it just depends on how long you want this story arc to go with The Rock and with the bloodline. Because could, are we bringing in Jacob Fatu possibly down the line? Is this just the first of a couple of people that they could bring in? You know, something that's been rumored for a while. Something I think it was Jacob Fatu talked about when he wanted his release from MLW was that they actually contacted everybody and wanted them to be a part of something. So... They could absolutely do something like this, but it just, I guess, depends on how long you want to try to draw it out for. I think Tamatanga joining WWE is the best possible move for everybody. I think if you put, give him a new name, give him a little bit of a new coat of paint, introduce him in as one of the island boys. Yes, he is not Samoan, but Haku, all that stuff. He might as well be just like Snuka. All that sort of stuff, you know, that we're all in the family together. He is considered here. part of the family. Part of the family. Even though he is not actually yeah. part of the family. 
Yeah, it's, it's that island linkage that, that is out there. So I think this is the best move because him going to impact or him going to AEW to me, he goes in as Tamatanga. I think he's just another guy who has some good matches and I just don't I don't see where he can it doesn't he doesn't maximize his potential. He may win more titles there, he may be in more five star matches there, whatever. But I don't think it's the best thing for him. He goes to TNA. He's a huge fish in a small pond. They can bank on him. He's great. He can work with the young guys. He would be new to a lot of people. There could be some good things there. But the problem is for him, it's the least paying of all of the gigs, and it's the least shine out of all of them. So I like this opportunity for him. And if it works out well for him, who knows if it opens the door again for Tango Loa, who was there at one point, and Hikuleo, who... Again, he's got to develop a lot more in New Japan, but if he continues to do that, he still may be a guy because of his size and his look that WWE is interested in down the line. Bernier says, isn't Rock going to turn baby, or Roman going to turn baby face? I don't think so at all. Listen. He could. There's, no, here's the thing. Obviously, the eventually. Yeah. Okay, but The Rock was not supposed to do this heel gimmick. The Rock was supposed to be the baby face versus Roman Reigns. Didn't work out. So, Rock's going full heel, okay? But I see this whole WrestleMania thing as the Rock playing the role of Mike Tyson in the Shawn Michaels, Steve Austin, 1998 WrestleMania deal. He is a heel now, but ultimately there is going to be a split, and he is going to be the babyface versus Roman Reigns as the heel and they will do Rock and Roman down the line. I don't see Rock being the heel in that situation and Roman Reigns being the babyface because Rock did not come back to be a heel. He's embraced the heel role because that's what ended up happening, but that was not what he came here to do. So I think that he will be turning babyface. The Rock will remain the heel for when you do the Rock versus Roman match. Now... I guess we'll go to this year. We got some hirings and some promotions. Rob Fee. Which, man, is that ever an NXT name or what? Rob Fee, the former Marvel writer, announced Tuesday his now his new title, WWE Director of Character Development. He was first hired as the, quote, Director of Long-Term Creative in September of 2022. And he wrote some exciting news. Last year, I moved to Florida to be able to work with talent directly on every aspect of their characters. Today, my title is officially WWE Director of Character Development. And he was congratulated by Ariel Helwani. Made sure to get his congratulations in. He once pitched a movie based on Bray Wyatt's The Fiend and played a pivotal role and the development of the White Rabbit campaign leading to his return at Extreme Rules 2022. Also, Patrick Scott, indie wrestler, has retired from wrestling, and he is now a member of... Well, he's a, he's a WWE creative writer's assistant, which means he is an assistant to the writers, but he has now gotten that job left North Carolina as an independent wrestler, woke up yesterday in Connecticut, an employee of WWE. <laughs> so funny. Nothing. I just, I don't know. You know, sometimes you fall asleep in places and you wake I up. I have never fallen just, asleep and so woke like up in WWE. It's like a whole world. You know, you're like, oh my God, how did this happen? What is his exact title again? His bulky title that he has now? Are you talking about Rob wife? Fee? Yes. Uh, Rob Fee is the... Uh, Damn it, Mike. Vice President of... Rob Fee is the WWE Director of Character Development. Is that above or below? I guess it would be below because it doesn't have a senior in front of it. The Vice President of Talent Development Creative. Brother, if the Michael check cashes, I don't care what it is or where it <laughs> ranks. Call me whatever you want. Kidding me? <laughs> I don't even know what my title is. I've been this, I've been doing this since 95. Thought you were a boss, man. I guess maybe I'm a CEO. Isn't that fancy? Is that a fancy enough title? 
Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.